Hello, this is David Mandel, and this is um, CIS 240L Linux Systems Administration at Portland Community College. Um, tonight we're in uh, week seven. This is, and uh, we're going to be doing chapter eight in your textbook by Eckhart, um, right there. And uh, chapter eight is on. Uh, System Initialization and X Windows. Uh, the book talks about the si systems administration pretty well, so we won't talk about that very much. Um, um, but we will talk about X Windows quite a little bit. Um, also, I should mention that this week, I believe we have, um, if we look at our schedule for the week, I believe we have a, a quiz due this week. Um, normally, the quizzes are due Sunday, none because of um, the existence of Veterans Day. So there's a day off. So we're giving you an extra day, or I am. Um, we'll look a little bit at Caligator.org, because um, the last lab, you have to review an open source event. Uh, things we have going on here. Uh, one of the events that's interesting is the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing. I suppose there's a charge for that. I haven't looked into it, but I think it's going on between now and Saturday. I suppose there's a charge for it because it's at the Oregon Convention Center. <coughs> um, other things going on, the um, uh, SQL conf SQL developers are getting together. Uh, Portland Drupal Users Group, OK, and so on. Um, and the Galois technical talk. Um, OK, uh, enough for that. Um, let's see. Your last couple labs have been on um, um, shell scripting, and your next lab is on shell scripting. And I've been getting mixed reviews on these. Some people think they're great. They love them. They're excited about them. Other people are struggling with them a little bit. I clearly misworded some of these. I used words like bells and whistles, which um, is not a technical phrase. That's <coughs> slang English, and I probably shouldn't have used that. And maybe I was a little too vague on what I wanted. But really. What I do want is I just want you to improve your shell scripting from whatever level it is at. Um, I may add a couple uh, little segments on shell scripting to the last chapter yet. But I, I will say just being able to do a little bit of shell scripting is sometimes very useful. I will give a very brief example right here, actually, of, of kind of a useful shell script. Um, I've got a problem sometimes with some sort of a a um, job that just keeps piling up on my system. And if I actually look at, uh, I do a PS minus EF and look at the um, um, number of jobs I have uh, due to totem, uh, which is a um, Totem is a piece of software that will let you view videos in Linux. And I just get a huge buildup of old jobs in Totem that should die and don't die. And I came up with a little um, a pipe that is pretty efficient in killing these guys. Let's see what I have here. There, this, this pipe. Um, kill minus 9, and then I've got a big command that gets executed here. Basically, it does the PF minus EF, PS minus EF, which gives me this listing here. And then it does a grep to only get the objects here that have a totem in them. And then it does a translate command, which this translate command basically strips out all the extra spaces. So if I've got two spaces, it becomes one space. If I've got three spaces, it becomes one space. So I get rid of all my extra spaces. And then I use the cut command. 
to basically take these numbers out here, basically just the process codes, uh, process numbers. And um, <coughs> so when I execute this guy here, I will get something like, let me just make that a junk command. Now let me execute this. It gives me the processes that I want to kill. Uh, there's probably an easier way of killing these. Um, I think I can name processes and things like that. But this works. And it's the way I've been doing it for years. And then, so if I um, make that a command like that, make that like that, and go back here and do a um, kill, and we'll do a minus 9 as our signal, that will get rid of all my processes. And then I see that I have left. Um, no processes or one. Oh, actually, that one process that is left is just the process that I'm running that has the totem, that has the e grep minus e totem in it. <coughs> so I kill all my processes. The only thing is, is this is sort of the pipe from hell. Um, I mean, the truth is, it took me a little bit of time to come up with this pipe. And I think a lot of people, it might take even longer to come up with this pipe. So what do I do? I basically, um, the way I save that work, <coughs> is by writing a little shell script and putting all of that work into my shell script. And what does my shell script do? That's the shell script. Let me clear the screen again. Let me print out the shell script. Two lines. The first line, well, three lines. The first line just says that this is a bash shell script or a born shell script. The second line is just a carriage return. I'm not sure why I put that in there. It didn't need to be in there. And the third line is the pipe from hell. And um, that, you know, the big, huge, ugly pipe that I don't really want to re remember and recreate every time. So I just encapsulate that into a little one line uh, bash shell. Now, the reason I'm showing this to you is that I want to emphasize how important it is to be able to do a little bit of shell scripting. It doesn't have to be big, fancy shell scripts. One, a one line shell script in this case can save me a lot of time over, over um, uh, over a long period of time because it basically freezes um, or memorizes something that I learned. And um, so, it, OK, it's kind of dumb. It's not a very big, fancy shell, shell script. It's got one line, but it's one valuable line. I keep that as a shell script. Um, and that's pretty valuable every time I want to use it. So. Um, and maybe I should make some comment statements and actually document this a little bit better and stuff. But um, uh, you know that will come with time. Um, OK. Um, once again, I may go back. Uh, my intent is to go back and try to add it, um, uh, an example of me writing a shell script to last uh, week's, um, to chapter 7. But uh, I may not get there or whatnot. Um, in any case. I'm working on Chapter 8 videos now. Bye-bye. Um,